This is a guide on how to beat the Blood of the Dead Easter Egg solo. I will make the assumption that you already know what the Easter Egg steps are, so I will not go into depth on how each step works, instead I will give tips on how to approach certain steps on realistic mode in the least painful way possible. Before you start your game, I would recommend that you complete the Voyage of Despair Easter Egg. This is because beating the Easter Egg gives you the free doors perk which allows you to open all doors for free. This will make the initial setup a lot easier and less risky. Here is a picture of the setup I'll be using in this game. However, some recommended talismans are the Bright Dragon Scale, or the Major Reinforced Charm, and some other useful elixirs are Shields Up, Blood Debt, and Undead Man Walking. However, the reason why I'll be using this setup is because common elixirs are readily available to a lot of players, and I want to make this guide as accessible as possible. As soon as you spawn in, you're going to want to open the first two doors to access the first dog. The dog requires six zombies to be fed, and on round one there are 13 zombies total. If you use the knife attachment on the strife, then you should be able to feed this first dog very easily with no problems. Once the dog is fed, kill all remaining zombies for except for one, buy the Mog 12, and then go turn on the power. You can now attempt the catwalk. For the first part of the catwalk, I would recommend shooting the sprinting zombies with the Mog 12, or if you really balls it, you can melee them with the stiletto knife. Make sure to avoid killing the slow zombies so that the round does not transition. When you reach the second part of the catwalk, make sure to kill the dogs in the distance to spawn in the warden. Once you get your specialist, use it to finish the catwalk and then kill the warden and pick up the shield piece. Now you can open up the rest of the map, turn on power, buy a victorious tortoise and stamina up, and then craft the shield. Finally, you can end round 1 by killing the last zombie at the second dog head. Since you completed the catwalk on round 1, round 2 is a guaranteed dog round. The easiest way to kill the dogs is to drain them with the shield key, and doing this will guarantee you 2 charges on the shield for round 3. Your goal for round 3 is to feed both the second and the third dog, get the spoon melee weapon, get the free blunder gat, and start the process of getting the magma gat. Feeding the second dog can be tricky as the area is very narrow and small. I would recommend killing one zombie then running around the prison in a loop before feeding another zombie. On the screen you can see one route that I take. In general this is a very safe route but sometimes the d-block corridor will be filled up by a lot of zombies. If you find yourself getting blocked, don't be afraid to use a shield blast to clear the path. Here is also another route that you can take. Once you have fed the second dog, you should go feed the third dog. Since the area is a lot more open, it should be easy for you to train the zombies and safely feed the dog without any issues. After feeding all three dogs, you should go and grab the Hell's Retriever, get the spoon, and get the free blunder gat while keeping as many zombies alive as possible. This is so you can begin the upgrade process for the Magma at the end of round 3. At the start of the round, you should wait a little bit for the zombies to spawn in. Once it's no longer safe, you will want to use your special weapon and kill as many zombies as you can. As your special weapon is about to run out, go outside the Warden House and kill all remaining zombies except for one. Once you have the final zombie, you can deposit the souls into the fireplace and safely forge the Magma Gat. Make sure to kill the Warden with the Mog 12 without killing the final zombie. If you have the points to spare, you should buy Death Perception, turn on Pack a Punch, and buy Dying Wish. You should also mag the wall with the spoon before killing the final zombie and ending the round. Your goal for round 5 should be to get a level 2 special weapon, because this is a requirement in order to do the Monkey Bomb Easter Egg. Once you have a level 2 specialist, you can finish the round by camping in the spot next to the wall by. At the start of round 6, you should train in the cafeteria while getting the minimum amount of kills to fill up your specialist. Once you have your specialist, make your way to this area and slowly group up the zombies before killing them with your katana. It should be easy to get enough kills in one use of the specialist, and once your specialist runs out, you're going to want to use your magma gap before running away from that area. For the remainder of the round, just train in the cafeteria and save the final zombie. You will then want to go shoot the monkey statue, retrieve the monkey bombs from the spawn, and then input the code 666 to spawn in the warden. You will then want to use the warden to break down the wall to start the next step. You can see on the screen how I approach this. Remember to make sure that the wall has been scratched before attempting this step. If you throw the monkey bomb such that it makes contact with the wall and then stand behind the monkey bomb, you should be able to do this step without much issue. Once the wall is broken down, interact with the chair and pick up the glowing orb. Place the orb at the spawn, interact with the crinorium, and then find and shock the first ghost bird. If you can afford it, you should also pack a punch to the magma gap before ending the round. For the next couple of rounds, you should just try and survive either by camping with the magma gat or by trading in the cafeteria. Make sure at the end of each round to save a zombie and find and blast the ghost bird. 
I would also recommend upgrading the shield while you are on the ghost bird step. You can see on the screen how I approach this. You want to make sure that the zombie is far away before you hit the box. You should also preemptively start draining with the shield key so that if the lock appears you can turn it white and throw your tomahawk at it as fast as possible. The shield upgrade will be essential for certain future steps, but also the upgraded shield takes 5 hits to be broken by a zombie, whereas the standard shield takes 4 hits before being broken. Once you have retrieved the Cronorium from the final ghost bird, place it down at the Warden's house so we can start the challenges. Since the order for your challenges will probably be different from mine, I will have timestamps in the description for each challenge. The new Industries challenge can be quite a pain on Solo, however with this method it should be fairly easy. Make sure you have 4 shield charges and a fully charged specialist before saving one zombie. You will then want to board all windows in the D block area. This is so you can buy as much time as possible for when you start the step. Once you are fully prepared, take the zombie to the middle of the D block corridor and use your specialist. The knockback from the specialist will count as a kill to start the step, but the zombie will respawn rather than the round ending. Hopefully the zombie respawned behind a fully built barrier which means you will have a lot of time to drain the ghost. Try to keep the zombie alive for as long as possible, but if the zombie becomes too much of a nuisance, kill it and continue to drain the ghost. As you can see the ghost required 4 shield blasts in order to turn fully red. If you are unlucky and had to kill the zombie early, you can use elixir such as undead man walking and in plain sight to buy you more time. Once the ghost is fully red, take the fast travel from the cafeteria to the new industry's building and wait for the ghost to arrive. While waiting for the ghost, I would recommend spamming the magma guy on the ground to distract the zombies and feel free to use your specialist if necessary. As you can see in my game, my shield actually broke at this point, so I had to use Dead of Nuclear Winter in order to buy more time. As soon as the ghost enters the room, use the trap and the challenge should be completed. The first part of the Morse code challenge can be quite tedious on the solo. I would recommend that you try to guess the first few entries of the Morse code correctly without using anything. Eventually you can start to use things such as the Zombie Blood, the In Plain Sight Elixir and the Katana Level 3 ability, which should give you enough time to guess the rest of the code. Once you have inputted the code correctly, kill a zombie in the infirmary to spawn in the ghost. I then recommend that you group up the zombies in the cafeteria before going back up to the infirmary area to shield blast the ghost. Once this is done you should shoot the ground with the magma gat and hold the interact button at the ghost so that he starts to follow you. You should then pull out your katana, go invisible and start to kill as many zombies as possible while working your way towards the gondola. When my specialist was about to run out I used dead of nuclear winter to clear the area so I could safely walk down the corridor and past the building bench. For the remainder of the journey to the gondola I liberally spammed the magma gat on the ground so I could safely reach the gondola without issue. Continue to spam the magma gat until the ghost reaches the gondola and once he is fully inside, use the gondola. For the final part of the journey, continue to spam the magma gat in front of you while leading the ghost down the stairs. Once the ghost is over halfway down the stairs, you should be able to run to the red portal and camp there with the magma gat until the ghost disappears. After picking up the red orb you should immediately pull out your katana, become invisible and start merciless dashing through the citadel. This is because walking through the tunnels manually is extremely risky on realistic mode. The technique for doing the Simon Says step is basically the exact same on realistic difficulty as it is on normal mode. Make sure to save a zombie and have at least 3 shield charges before going down to the docks and starting the Simon Says step. Just be cautious of your shield health during this step. The last thing you want to happen is for the shield to break, causing you to lose all your shield charges. Once the Simon Says step is over, take a note of what the symbols are, pick up the punch card and head to spawn. After identifying the correct set of symbols, go to the ghost in the power room and shield blast him as he is walking towards the correct switch. Once all three switches are done, make sure to pick up the orb. For the Michigan Avenue challenge there is no clever technique. Once you are ready, shield blast the ghost and start the escort. Make sure to liberally spam the magnum gat in front of you as the zombies pour in. Death perception is actually really useful for this because you can clearly see where all the zombies are coming from. The ghost actually has quite a lot of health, so don't worry if the zombies occasionally hit him. It might be wise to board up all the windows in the D block before doing this in order to buy more time. Once I reach this choke point I use an implant in sight. This is to alleviate pressure from myself which allows me to easily kill all the zombies and escort the ghost through the door. Consider also using an undead man walking if you have it in your loadout. At this point I use a specialist weapon, go invisible and continue to kill as many zombies as possible. When the warden spawns in I ignore him for the time being and continue to prioritise killing the zombies. Holster's return. It is my honour to greet him. Once 
Once my specialist has run out, I spam the ground with the magma gat so that the warden runs over the lava and dies. You should then be able to finish the escort and pick up the orb. While the banjo challenge is a simple one, it can actually be quite dangerous if you are not careful. This is a challenge where I have my only dying wish proc in this game. Hopefully this doesn't happen to you. You should wait for a few seconds before taking the banjo so that the zombies can spawn in. As soon as you have the banjo, immediately run to the first circle and start to spam the magma on the floor. Now for friendship, I will give you the gift of music. When the circle changes location, you should immediately pull out your katana and rush to the second circle, appear invisible, put the katana away and then spam with the magma gar. Don't do what I did, otherwise you'll probably have a dying wish proc. You will probably finish this challenge during the second circle. Once it is complete, spam the magma gar on the ground and go give the banjo back to the ghost. I have not played with such vigor. Is that a bar fight in Kyoto? Since you won't be able to do all the challenges in one round, you will have to burn through some rounds. Because you are probably in the early teens now, it can become quite tricky to survive. I personally recommend that you train in the cafeteria, as it is a great place for collecting zombie souls, as well as just burning through the rounds. While training in the cafeteria, you will probably take some shield hits. It is important to be able to repair the shield and run back to the cafeteria safely. On the screen, you will be able to see a route that I take. If you have 4 shield charges and just want to get to the end of the round, I recommend grouping up all the zombies before using the magma gat to kill them all. Make sure to kill any dogs that spawn by draining them with the shield key. Once you have completed all 5 challenges, you are almost ready for the boss fight. However, before proceeding, make sure that you have a fully pack a punch mark 12. When you are ready, place the orbs at spawn, go to the warden's house and place down the summoning key. When the ghost bird sets you free, go and pick up your things. Also repair the shield if you wish. When you reach the library, shoot the warden's feet with the magma gat to kill him. Make your way down the d-block corridor and when the warden spawns in again, do not kill him. Instead, let the bird stun him. Slowly make your way down the catwalk by draining the dogs with the shield key. Try to avoid taking damage if possible. Doing this should give you enough souls for the boss fight. You should also be aware of the zombie hands that stick out near the end of the path. This is because they deal 10 damage each and it even goes through the Victoria's Tortoise perk, making them very risky. <laughs> Place the orb that was dropped by the boss in this location and then go and start the boss fight. Fortunately for us, the boss fight is quite easy, however, that isn't an excuse to be complacent. The strategy for the first phase is to run around the outer edge of the arena while frequently spamming the magma gap behind you. Here on screen you can see this strategy demonstrated. You can also kill the dogs by draining them with the shield key. You can see here that a dog randomly spawned right next to me and hit me. This took me from 50 HP to 10 HP. If this happens, immediately pull out your shield and then drain any dogs to death. Keep running around with the shield until your HP recovers back to 50 and then continue the strategy as normal. As you approach the end of the first phase, run towards the middle of the arena and kill any remaining zombies. Eventually two power-ups will spawn, but you should absolutely not go and get them. Instead, wait for the big warden to spawn and immediately run into the red area. This is because gas will spawn, which will hit you for 50 HP if you are not in the red zone fast enough. Once you have shot the red orbs, blast the machine with the shield and wait until the gas has fully disappeared before picking up the drops. For the second phase, we will use the exact same strategy as phase 1. However, in this phase, red circles will spawn on the ground. Make sure to avoid standing in them.
As you can see, we have reached the end of phase two, and we will do exactly the same thing as what we did at the end of phase one, making sure to get in the red zone as soon as possible, shoot the orbs, shield blast the machine enough times, and wait for the gas to disappear before picking up the drops. If you are playing as Richtofen, then you will need to eventually step inside the machine, but if you are not, then a bot will spawn in and go inside for you. If you are Richtofen, then you will need to make your way from the lab to the boss arena. Once you use the orange crystal, you should immediately use your specialist and go invisible, kill off as many zombies as possible, before finishing the boss with a magma gun. However, if you are not Richtofen, then you will need to wait some time before the bot arrives. In the meantime, just run around the arena like you did in the first two phases, but make sure to avoid the huge warden that is rushing you down. Once the bot uses his crystal, shoot at the big warden with the magma gat to complete the boss fight. Hopefully you found my guide to be useful. This is the first time I've ever made a guide, so feedback would be appreciated. If you wish to see a guide for another map on realistic mode, feel free to suggest it in the comments. Thanks for watching and goodbye.